In this video we're going to look at mammalian digestion. We're going to look at the digestive system and in particular we're going to start at the human digestive system consisting of the esophagus, stomach, small intestine and large intestine. We're going to then going to compare this to the digestive system of carnivores and the digestive system of herbivores. The digestive system consists of the alimentary canal, starting with the mouth, and we've also already looked at the mouth and how teeth increase the surface area of the food. Food then travels down the esophagus into the stomach, from the stomach into the small intestine, where Juices are added from the liver and pancreas. We then move into the large intestine. Finally, the waste products are stored in the rectum and then excreted. So the esophagus is the pipe that transports food from the mouth to the stomach. And it does this using a process of rhythmic muscle contractions called peristalsis. And partway down the esophagus, is the epiglottis. Now the epiglottis is a flap basically which controls access into either the trachea or the esophagus. So food goes down the esophagus, air goes down the trachea and the epiglottis makes sure that those two don't mix. Okay, In the stomach, the stomach has a very acidic environment containing hydrochloric acid and has a range of enzymes to further break down food. And how much time food is spent breaking down in the stomach depends on the diet of the animal. So in carnivores, it doesn't spend very much time. In herbivores, it, with the foregut digestion, it spends a very long time in the stomach and in separate sections of the stomach. And in herbivores with hindgut digestion, somewhere in between. And us as omnivores, again, is somewhere in between. And we'll look a bit later on at the difference between foregut and hindgut digestion. Okay, once it gets into the small intestine, so it goes from the stomach to the small intestine, at this point, it, the, what it actually is is called chyme, so it's partially digested food mixed with the acid and enzymes from the stomach. So this goes through the sphincter into the duodenum. The duodenum is the very first part of the small intestine. And in the duodenum, it fills up with pancreatic juice from the pancreas, as well as bile, which is produced in the liver and stored in the gallbladder. So both of these have high levels of enzymes in them and as well as a uh, very basic or alkaline. So what that does is adds extra enzymes to the chemical digestion, as well as neutralizes the acid from the stomach. Okay. The main job of the small intestine is to absorb nutrients across the intestine wall. And as soon as they've been dissolved or chemically digested far enough, that they're able to dissolve along the wall, they go across and into the bloodstream. Now, once again, surface area comes up, and the small intestine has a whole heap of folds called villi, and a whole heap of actual projections from the surface of the uh, wall, the small intestine wall, and these are called microvilli. And then these increase the surface area and therefore increase the rate of absorption of food into the blood system. The chyme then moves into the large intestine where most of the nutrients have already been absorbed in the small intestine. In the large intestine, the last water and salts are absorbed into the blood. What's left is things that are insoluble uh, or undigested. And these things get, after being dried out from the water being absorbed from them, get excreted as feces. Uh, herbivores, because of the fibrous food that they eat, uh, can't break down all of that food, so they produce large quantities of very fibrous feces. Okay, we're now going to look at carnivore digestion and how the carnivore digestive system is different to the human digestive system. So they have a similar digestive system in that it's got all the same bits 
However, the intestine and the colon are much shorter in carnivores. Now, the reason that it's much shorter in carnivores is because plant cells are much harder to digest than animal cells. Animal cells have a cell membrane around them. Well, as you know, plant cells have a cell wall. That cell wall is made of cellulose, uh, and that cellulose is very hard to digest. In fact, the enzymes that we have in the digestive system aren't able to digest that cellulose at all. Because these plant cells are harder to digest, herbivores have a longer intestine and colon so that the plant cells can spend more time in the intestine and colon and therefore have a greater chance of actually being absorbed. However, herbivores still aren't able, they don't produce any enzymes that actually can break down this plant material, in particular the cellulose in the cell wall. So what they have is symbiotic anaerobic bacteria that lives inside them. And this bacteria ferments that plant material and breaks it down and softens it into a form that can actually be digested by the enzymes that they have. Now there's two types of digestive systems that herbivores have. Foregut fermenters or ruminants carry out fermentation in the rumen. So the rumen is situated before the stomach and basically the stomach is enlarged and broken up into separate chambers. And in the rumen, the first chamber and a very large chamber in most of these ruminants, uh, the anaerobic bacteria live there, they break down the food, and then the food goes into the true stomach before going into the intestine. So some examples of ruminants are sheep, kangaroos, wallabies, cows, deer, things like that. The other type of herbivore di digestion are the hindgut fermenters. And this fermentation is carried out after the gut or after the stomach as the name suggests, in the casem. So the casem is the very first part of the colon, or the large intestine. And in these hindgut fermenters, they have an extended or larger casem where these symbiotic anaerobic bacteria live. So an example of these are rabbits, possums, horses, koalas. And so these are all hindgut fermenters, and in particular, koalas have a, an extended casem that is about two meters long. In this video, we've looked at the digestive system, starting with the human digestive system, the element or the alimentary canal, which goes from the mouth, which we looked at in the previous video, down the esophagus to the stomach, where acid and enzymes are added. Then the small intestine, starting in the duodenum, where pancreatic juice and bile are added, which contain the enzymes as well as neutralizing the acid. The large intestine, which starts at the casem before going into the colon. Uh, and then finally being excreted from the rectum out the anus. We've then compared that to carnivore digestion, which has basically the same stuff, but the small intestine and large intestine, or colon, are much shorter and herbivore digestion, which could either be a foregut or a ruminant, where they have symbiotic anaerobic bacteria living before the stomach, or a hindgut digestion, where they have symbiotic anaerobic bacteria living after the stomach. And the place that they have it after the stomach is in the casem, that first part of the large intestine.